Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Dyson Spear Program and I'm very happy to say that I've finally made it. As you can sort of tell by that massive glowing blue thing over there just above the horizon, I've finally managed to finish off the um, my Dyson Sphere. And okay, at the moment we're showing two of them uh, because I started the second one because I thought I might as well. But if I had that one at least as best as I can and hide back structures and so on. You can see now in here, we've got the, the blue one in the middle is now completely finished. Every single um, every single solar sail has been added, every single rocket has launched and, and clipped onto it. So it is now completely finished and generating lots of power. It's generating 17.4 gigawatts, which is which is lots. Um, actually, now I'm clicking on the I've got the wrong one selected. There we go. 17.4 gigawatts. Um, being generated, I think. Yes, that does seem to be the right one. So, in order to make this, I launched 33,810 rockets in order to build up all of these nodes around it, and then hung almost half, a, no, just over half a million um, solar cells off it in order to provide, in order to completely cover it, provide a complete sphere, and build up the entire thing. And yes, I'm very happy to say it is now working absolutely, uh, completely working, uh, completely finished, and working very nicely, and generating, well, it was generating enough power to actually power the entire, um, it, 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 the entirety of everything I've got in the solar system. But I'll get onto that in a minute. I am quite impressed by the uh, the number of the solar cells we can see flying around here, all going out to join in on um, the second Dyson sphere that I'm building. So, uh, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll have it selected like that. Um, and this one I've decided to colour red because that's a different colour. So um, I thought I might as well, you know, while I was waiting for other things to finish, I might as well carry on launching the rockets as fast as I can, launching the solar sails at the speed I've been launching them at for ages, and just carry on building it up. So firstly, I started making this sort of bit round the round the equator here. Um, that was my, my the first first part of it I, 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 um, I achieved. And then I thought, well, you know what? Let's just let's just have the whole thing. So I built up all the rest of the structures around here, and we've been launching rockets out ever since, uh, which have now finished off. Fi I think no, they haven't finished building all the nodes. You can tell because they're still flying out here, and you can see quite a lot of stuff that isn't built yet. But we've got enough that it's pulling out the solar sails as fast as they're being launched, as you can tell, because there's none in the um, in, in in the swarm over here, and they're just all being added in. And when I when I hide the Dyson spheres, um, yes, you can you can see you can see the Dyson the the uh, solar sails flying in along here, forming up a um, I don't know what to call it, landing here to join this very very briefly join the swarm, and then immediately flying out to join the uh, Dyson sphere all, um, all over all all around it. So that's a, that's looks pretty cool it's nice they're, they're all flying out there and being added to the uh, being added to the sphere so that's coming along really well you can see oh, you can see the rockets being launched over where is it over there there's a steady stream of them taking off and now because so I did have them all flight taking off in uh, in perfect sync earlier um, because I got to the point where I'd launched enough rockets so that so the all of the um, all of the launch silos shut down then when I when I placed more um, more parts to, for this for the next sphere they all started launching again in unison but now it's got to the point where we ran out of rockets to launch and so as they've started all, as, as I fixed that and they've all started back up again now they're they're launching basically as as the rockets get to them, and uh, so you don't have quite the same um, un un massive, massive fleet of rockets taking off in perfect unison. But there's a steady stream of them, which which works just which works just as well. Maybe maybe even better. <clears throat> so if we fly over here, we can see what we can we can see what's going on. Oops, touch down a little bit too soon. We can see what's going on over here. There's a um, a nice steady stream of rockets being produced, flowing out along here, and they're all being taken out into the into the launch area and and fired off into space as fast as possible. In order to get this going, there were a few things. I'm trying to remember what they were. There were a few things I needed to boost. Oh yes, the main thing was the um, was these 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 frame things that come in here, and also the um, the titanium alloy. And so one sort of leads into the other. The, the the shortage of frames was because of the shortage of titanium alloy. So if I go over to the other pole over here, and then find yes, it's over here. This is this is where we're making the um, all of the, the titanium alloy. So it turned out that over here we just we weren't producing um, we weren't producing the titanium alloy fast enough from this row of machines in order to keep the uh, machines over here that are making the frames happy. Uh, I fixed that now, as you can tell by the fact that this is that, that well they're both basically well they're both pretty full. This one's still flowing quite nicely and trying to keep trying to keep up. There's lots in there, so I think it's probably okay. There does seem to be a shortage of um, of these tube of the uh, bucky tubes, but that doesn't seem to matter too much. Um, I think when are we not we're not actually using them for anything, perhaps. Oh wait, hang on a minute. No, they are being pa they're, no, they're supposed to be being passed along here. So it looks like yes. Okay, the current shortage and the thing that's causing these to not be made as fast as would I would ideally like is the lack of bucky tubes. So we'll need to wait for uh, some more of these to be shipped in from 
locally or remotely. Either way, there's a shortage of those and that's going to be the next thing that limits the rate I can launch rockets at. But I sort of don't care because as, as I showed you earlier, I have in fact finished the first Dyson Sphere and that's what matters. In order to get this to work a bit more effectively and a bit more productively, I've upgraded, I've upgraded the paint on a lot of my um, a lot of my builds around the around the universe to use, now use the blue paint. So in the last episode, I was talking about how I'd, I'd upgraded a few places to be using this, but now I've gone around and, and, and bumped quite a few other ones up as well. So over here we've got we've got this being used for the um, uh, for the purple science, which is nice, uh, but mostly it's over here. I've upgraded this because this is this this allows me to produce significantly more. Um, titanium alloy and therefore the uh, titanium frame sections than I'd be able to without it. Um, there were a few other minor problems over here so I think I think one of the big issues was that I didn't have enough steel coming out so over here you can see I've extended the number of um, iron uh, iron smelteries. I think they're only out to about here before so I come in put in a huge amount of landfill and extended it out here same with the steel smelteries they seem to be yeah, reasonably well balanced to each other. If the, if you have try if if you have the same number of both of them, it seems to work reasonably well. Um, that said, it looks like I've got slightly more iron than I need at this point. Maybe that's down to the uh, productivity bonuses. I'm not quite sure. But anyway, that's that's working nicely. We don't need to make uh, sulfuric acid anymore here. So these machines are all sort of completely idle. I could go over and rip them up, but I haven't bothered because. And I can't remember if I talked about this in the last episode, and I think I'd, I think I I think I did. Um, Yes, I did. I, I, I'm sure I did. I went out and I, I uh, discovered another planet that had acid oceans on it. So I was, I've been collecting the uh, sulfuric acid from there and then shipping it over to here. And that makes things much, much easier. And I've noticed there's a bit of a tendency for that sort of thing to happen in this game. Which is quite nice, actually, because it gives you a little bit of um, bit of variety. But yes, yeah, so taking sulfuric acid as an example. You start off initially making it from scratch, uh, which requires refined oil, it requires stone, and it requires water. All of which you have to... Well, in the case of stone and water, you just pull them up out of the ground, although stone is a, a resource that will eventually deplete. And for the um, refined oil, you need to pull up uh, crude oil and refine it, or potentially turn hydrogen and coal into it, but initially you won't be doing that. Oh yes, yeah, so later on you find the recipe that allows you to make refined oil out of hydrogen and coal, so maybe you move over to that one because you've got a massive supply of hydrogen being brought in from a gas giant, or maybe you don't. And then later on again, you then fly off, you find another planet that has sulfuric acid oceans on it. And so you then just start pulling it up out of those oceans and flying it over here in spaceships. And that solves your, pro your uh, supply problems completely. There are other things like that too. Um, the uh, space warpers is a good example of it. You can either make them out of um, out, out of the, the the gravitron lenses, which are relatively expensive, or you can spend a gravitron lens and a pro and a quantum processor to make a couple of the green science cubes, and then spend those on making lots of the uh, space warpers. So suddenly, when you get when you take that extra step, the space warpers become really cheap. And the same with lots of other things. So the um, the uh, graphene tubes you can make. You, you initially start off by making them out of graphene and titanium, and then you discover the um, spiniform stalagmite crystals. And then once you've got a, pl a planet where you can dig those up, they're incredibly cheap to make. So you just dig up a load of those and turn them into the tubes. So moving on to the more advanced recipes makes an enormous difference. Another possible example, and this is one that I was actually playing with during the uh, stream, because it, you, if you want to make the, uh, the the yellow science, you need diamonds, which are just compressed coal that's been compressed a couple of times, and you need titanium crystals. Titanium crystals require titanium and crystals. Crystals have a massive long chain of stuff to build that requires loads and loads of oil and is just a massive pain. Or alternatively, once you've, once you've got escaped to your solar system and gone off to other planets, you can start just digging straight up out of the ground, um, digging up the organic crystals, flying them in, and just make the yellows and make the titanium crystals straight out of those. It's much, much easier and saves you enormous amounts of oil. So so that was another thing I did. And let's have a look at that, in fact, because that is sort of, sort of relevant to what I'm saying. Here we go. So yellow science. Um, previously... I had this massive facility over here that was pulling in uh, pulling in loads of coal, making carbon, pulling in oil, making plastic out of the two of them from all of these all of these chemical plants over here. And now it's it's feeding that it's feeding that into this um, into this tower here because apparently there is something I do that uses up small uses up at least a, a little bit of plastic. But most of it was was previously flooding around here to be made into these crystals. But now I've put in over here I've put in a um, a tower here that's receiving the crystals from another solar system. And then we've got a priority uh, splitter over here that's bringing, that's bringing, prioritizing this input and passing them along here. So this whole system has gone to sleep. We no longer need any of it. And that's meant I'm able to produce the yellow science much more quickly. And part of the reason this is relevant is because one of the big things I needed to work on was, uh, was the science production. Because, I don't know if you remember, but I've been saying that my goal with this, with this game 
is to complete all of the non-infinite sciences and finish off my first dyson sphere so the dyson sphere was looking really good it was coming along very nicely and i reckoned it wasn't going to take me all that long to finish it so i decided the next thing to do was to come along come over here and give the science a bit of a boost so previously i think i had just these three towers here well no no i had three towers along here the two outer ones were taking in all of the all of the uh, these really bright science packs because uh, if you look at here look at this this is how you make this is how you make white science you take in one of each of all of the others and some antimatter and that makes a white science pack so i had two towers here making the white science and then one in the middle doing the actual research that i decided was not the best way to do it um it wasn't it wasn't giving me anything like enough throughput and it wasn't allowing me to paint the science so i built a load of extra towers along here we've now got a lot more science being made all the time being fed out here through stackers through splitters and so on until we've got a prop there's probably a quad stack in there but it's so bright i can't tell and then we're able to paint it with the blue uh, blue paint to get the mass maximum boost out of that we can and that having all of that throughput and then the oh and these machines over here that are doing the actual science doing all of that has meant that i'm able to finish i finished i'd already finished all of the technology upgrades you, you saw those happen but then over here in the upgrade side I've now done all the non-infinite ones. So you can see here, it says, this is Mecha Core 5, Mecha Core 7 is an infinite one. So there was a 6 in there, was the first of the infinite one. So I've done that one. Similarly with all the others, 6, 8, 5, 7, so, so similarly all the way down here, I've now done the, at least the first one of all of the um, all of the infinite researches. And down here at the bottom, well, same sort of thing. And I managed to get all of these ones where it uh, conveniently stacks the um, all, all everything that's coming out of your uh, your towers, which is really handy. It means I don't need half the uh, stackers I've got scattered around the factory. But oh well, I guess these things these always things always come in a little bit too late. If I needed to build anything new, then that'd be really really useful. Um, these did require me to get some of these as prereqs, but that's fine. I was able to uh, able to unlock all of these, and that's why I've done quite a few of the infinite researches along here. Um, all the way up to the actually the, the final one, so maybe it's not quite as infinite as I was implying. So yes, I've managed managed to get all of that done. There were a few upgrades we needed for this. I showed you the yellow science because that was too slow. I think I gave purple science a bit of a nudge as well. But the big thing, the thing that required the most effort, was just over here, uh, where I'm where I'm making the antimatter. And antimat producing antimatter requires excitable photons, which come out of these things. So where you, you put in, I think. I don't think you need to put the Gravitron lenses in, you just flick it over to photon generation, but the lens makes it a lot more effective or a lot more um, prolific is the wrong word. Uh, it allows you to produce a lot more from, from, the, from the systems. I think it allows them to run all the time rather than only running during the day. Maybe that's what it does, I forget. Um, so yes, I've got all of these things producing excitable photons. They're passed over here, they're, they're being stored temporarily in a box over here like this. Um, critical photons rather than excitable photons, I do apologise. And then fed out into these miniature particle accelerators, uh, colliders, that are then turning those photons into antimatter. That we, as usual, we're just feeding that into a uh, into a logistics station over here where, they, where it can stack up and eventually be taken away. So if I started try, trying to do another science now, let's pick out, I don't know, ray transmission efficiency, because that one's actually useful. You can see this rips through here quite nice and quickly because we've got all of those machines over there doing the science. Um, and then we've got all the, these, these machines behind them producing more white science packs for the rate they're being used up at. And as you can see, if I fly over here, you can see that they're, we're actually um, depleting them relatively quickly. This is these. I was intending these to be fairly close to balance, but I think actually um, the, the the ones on this side are capable of using the um, using the white cubes up a bit faster than this side is capable of making them. So if I was going to carry on for much longer, then I'd probably put at least one more stack in over here. Uh, that feels a little bit unnecessary though at the moment because I've, as I say, I've basically finished the game at this point. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this is working nicely. One of the problems with this is that uh, these things over here, they used actually, these use an enormous amount of power. So um, if we have a look over here at the uh, the power graph and go back over the last, let's look at look back over the last 10 hours. So I think here is probably when I started producing all of that antimatter, and this is where it. Pa I, I'm not sure exactly why it tailed off a little bit here, but the um, oh no, this is generation. Sorry. Um, I don't know why it's tailed off there at all in that case. Uh, but yeah, we had some big spikes along here when, for when I was producing large amounts of antimatter. And it got to the point where I wasn't capable of providing enough power. And in fact, it looks like I'm still not. So it's a good thing I'm doing that research into improving the transmission efficiency. <laughs> um, let's have a look at the Dyson... Yeah, so actually, yeah, so we're actually still not producing enough power at the moment because those um, those those, those antimatter... That antimatter generation is so power hungry. However, as we keep streaming these... Um, the, the solar sails out and add the, adding them to the sphere, the amount of power generating will gradually go up over time. So we'll start to generate more and more power. So yes, this is um, this is working reasonably well. Oh, and I've just remembered why the um, 
uh, why, why we saw the power sp uh, availability spike a little bit. So let's let's take a few of these. There we go. That's more than I wanted, but never mind. So one of the other things I was encouraged to do by chat was they thought, well, you should probably make a miniature sun before you finish the game because, well, it's it's a thing that it's it's a thing that's on the uh, on on the to do list, and you might as well. And I now have no idea where I put it. So I made it over. Oh no, I didn't. Here we go over here. So I made two of the new two of the um, energy generating buildings that I hadn't created yet. So in this one, I can put in these th these things, the uh, the um, fuel rods. So I drop those in there, and it'll start burning the uh, what these deuteron fuel rods. This one requires antimatter fuel rods, and I don't think I've got any of those. Let's see if I can make some in my pockets, of course. Oops. <laughs> or alternatively, I'll just throw the hydrogen all over the floor. I I, I hope nobody wanted that. Okay, so I put some of that in the um, in, in in the tower over there now. So that means I can now start to hoover up some of this some of this hydrogen, and that should mean I've now got enough stuff to actually make some of these. Oh, I can't. I, I can only do it in an assembler. All right. Never mind all that then. Oh, here we go. This this is the machine that's making them. Here we go. So this machine over here is the one that's making them. So I can grab a handful of these out of the, out of that machine. Come over here. Put them into this one. And there we go. Boom. We have the uh, the miniature sun, uh, the artificial star, if you will. And that now is producing quite a lot of power. So if I now go back and have a look at the uh, the power graph here, you can see suddenly the uh, the gener the power generation capacity has leapt up quite significantly. And that's how I was able to produce this much power beforehand. It was it was all down to this artificial star over here burning the uh, burning the anti antimatter fuel rods. So, um, yes, those are a couple of extra ways of generating power, which is very nice. Um, this, they, that, I mean, I was going to say it proved useful. It, it didn't really. I, I, I just put this, put these in because the technologies were there and available and at this stage of the game were quite easy to make. So I thought I might as well have a look at them. But these would be very potentially be very useful for, for sort of bootstrapping a, another planet. I wouldn't really want to have it using these long term because they require a fuel to be brought out to them. So I'd have to make large quantities of um, of antimatter fuel, which to be fair I kind of am doing at the moment over here, and then fi and then finding a way to ship it all over to the, um, the the planet that needed it. So yeah, that's that's that would be a bit of an effort, and I'd, ra I'd rather not not do that if I can avoid it. So which which is why all of my planets have been uh, using easier to obtain fuel fuel types like the uh, uh, like solar and um, well most nearly uh, nearly all solar in fact. I don't know why I'm bothering to tidy this up. I'm uh, I'm about to walk away from here and never look at it again. <laughs> so yes, that's that. Uh, what else did I do? So we made, we made, we uh, f I finished off the research. I've been launching uh, rockets out at quite a rate. Oh yes, I also went off and investigated a uh, another star system because people said, oh, you should go and have a look at a black hole. They're kind of cool. So I found one. It was blooming miles away. There it was, all the way over there. That was the black hole. Um, I went over there. It was. It was okay. It was a um, it was in, it was a large black hole. It was mildly interesting. The most interesting thing about it, though, was that I found a uh, a planet there that had lots and lots of resources on it. Let me look at that. That's 42 million iron ore. So I set up a few. I dropped a few mining drills down there with a bit of power. And so if I ever run that short of of any of these resources, then something can fly out there and go and get it. There's also, most interestingly, some unipolar magnets, which make absolutely no sense based on our current understandings of science. But never mind. So I dug up some of those. Um, I haven't actually used any of those. There is a there is a more advanced smeltery you can make that uses them, but I haven't made that yet. Now over here we have a neutron star, and I've been told that's also worth going to see as well. So let's let's do that now. Fly off this way. We'll fly right through the middle of the solar of the uh, Dyson Switch sphere because that's a thing you can do. Um, pick up a bit of speed. Where is it? So over, over there somewhere. I can't really see because there's a Dyson sphere in the way. But if we head it off this way, well, it'd be interesting to go and have a look at it. It's about a minute away, apparently. Um, is it? No, it's not that one. I I simply can't see it. I'm just uh, hoping I'm going in about the right direction because it's not that one up there either. I seem to be going in the right direction though. We can see the. Um, I also discovered that you can zoom out onto into, into this mode, into this view mode when you're um, when you're in hyperspace as well. So it gives you something a little bit more interesting to watch. So you can see there's Kalidas where I started. Um, oh, I'm running out of running out of fuel. Is that because I've run out of fuel? Yes, it is. Uh, let's put something burnable in there. Like um, yeah, let's let's use some of the antimatter fuel rods because they're there. This will also demonstrate the uh, the joy of running out of fuel in deep space because your mech burns it faster than it's able to. Uh, recharge itself. There is a research you can do to avoid that, uh, or to reduce the effect of reduce how much that happens, but I haven't done enough of it, by the looks of it. Um, yes, because then eventually you get to the point where your warp engine shuts down and you're just dropped in deep space. And this is significantly less awkward than, um, than when you actually run out of fuel completely, because 
as you can see at the bottom of the screen, my uh, batteries are charging back up again. But that will take a little while, so I'll um, uh, I'll fast forward the video now while we wait for that to charge back up again. There we go, almost there, and hopefully I've got enough uh, range to get to it before I run out of energy again. So I've started doing one of the researches that allows the mech to recharge more quickly. Um, I don't think it's actually going to finish in time to be actually, to be remotely useful, but let's have, let's have a look around this system anyway. So there's the neutron star. It is enormous and purple. It has a planet over there. I didn't actually check what were these planets, what the resources the planet had. Um, more unipolar magnets. That's nice to know. Um, it's very windy and quite solary. Massive, massive quantities of uh, resources again out here. So maybe it would have been worth coming out to some of these more distant planets in order to um, in order to try and get some resources earlier on. The problem is you then have much, much longer flight times for all the uh, all the uh, ships, all the drone ships that are going out to go and get things. Uh, let's 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 fly into closer to the, um, the neutron star and have a look. At it, have a good look at it. Uh, that was weird. I flew into it and it was te almost teleported 19 AU away. Let's, um, let's try that again. Okay, so I'm fairly close. It's very very bright, but then it's a, it's a star you'd kind of expect that. So I'll uh, I'll fly in towards it and, and see what happens this time because there was definitely something a little bit funny about that. I'm I'm sure you don't normally get teleported away from a star when you fly into it. Normally you just drop out of hyperspace, and, or at least you do if you fly into planets. I don't know. I've not flown into stars very much. I did manage to get into a close orbit around the black hole and discover there's an achievement for that, um, which was interesting. I managed to get my my, my face about 30 meters from a black hole, or 70 meters from a black hole, and everything was fine. So that's um, interesting and only slightly against all the laws of physics that I know. Now you can see my um, my speed is, is increasing there and I'm not actually accelerating so that's gravity of the uh, neutron star pulling me in so that's again mildly interesting. Uh, it's I was gonna say it's get, it getting brighter I'm not sure it is it's getting purpler anyway um, and bigger as I approach it. There's some interesting swirly effects on the surface of it that's uncomfortably bright to look at and Oop, there we go. I <laughs> found a neutron star and I've gone into orbit around it. And there's an achievement for that as well, because of course there is. Okay, well that was worth coming out here. That was worth coming out here to have a look at it, I think. Um, let's try and find that. Let's try and find that other planet. Uh, the planet that was in orbit around the neutron star. Go and have a quick look at that, because it's always interesting to go and investigate a new planet. Even if it's 3 AU away. Uh, I'm going to jump into warp speed because gravity's pulling. Oh, I've run out of space warpers, or at least I've run out of them in the um, in the mech. There we go. Uh, let's try that again. It's because I used about four of them to get over here because I kept running out of power, and each time you go into hyperspace, it uses up another warper. So there we go. There's a, a nice frozen planet here to come down and explore with some massive, massive veins of titanium on it. Look at that one. There's there's eight million, eight almost nine million titanium there. There's seven million there. These planets are really, really rich in resources, which is, as I say, is why it'd be not interesting and worth coming over to investigate. And here's some more unipolar magnets as well, which um, I must have left them in a box somewhere. Um, but yes, these are, in fact, a thing. And I, as I say, I didn't do anything with those. But if I'd wanted to, I could have, I could have then started building the uh, the the, the uh, Mark II um, smelting facilities. So, is there anything else to say about about the game? I I think probably not at this point, or at least not about what I've been doing in it. I've travelled around the universe. I've found some new planets. I found a black hole, and I've just just found a neutron star, which is nice. Um, I finished making my the first layer of my Dyson sphere, and the game is 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 one of those that never ends, much like Factorio, in that you can always, there's always more stuff you can do. But I set myself the objective of making the first layer, the blue layer of my Dyson sphere. That's completed now, and of doing all the science, and that's completed too. So that that uh, basically means this is the end of the series. I shall come back uh, later and do a um, and do a sort of a, a summary video with my thoughts on the game, bit of a review, that sort of thing. So this isn't going to be quite the final Dyson Sphere program video, um, but it's going to be the last one of the normal playthrough. I have enjoyed the game actually. It's been it's, uh, it's been it's an impressively pretty game. It's it's had lots of um, interesting stuff in it. And once I got over um, the control system being a bit different and sort of got my head round um, everything being on a sphere instead of a flat plane, uh, yes, I, I have to say I definitely enjoyed playing it. So I may well play it again in the future. I, I suspect if I do play it again in the future, it will be with um, a number of mods installed. Although not so although I haven't decided what mods those will be yet. 
So if you have any you would recommend, uh, let me know in the let me know in the comments, and um, maybe when I start my next game, we'll uh, I'll give them a try. In the meantime, I suspect so I, I'm going to be doing some, playing something a bit different next week. Uh, my my plan is to is for the uh, Wednesday night stream to to be. Uh, to, to be playing XCOM, the original XCOM again, because I started that um, ooh, a couple of months ago, I think, and it was good fun. So I'd like to do a bit more of it, um, and I think yeah, I think it was quite well received as well. So I'd like to do a bit more of that. Um, and but at some point, I, would, I think I'm going to play uh, the the other um, big factory game, uh, Satisfactory, because I've played lots of Factorio. I've played some Dyson Sphere programs, so I feel like I might as well pick up the third of the uh, of the of the trifecta, as it were. So I think that, that should be quite interesting. But uh, you'll make sure you subscribe to the channel so you see when that one that one pops up. Um, in the meantime, there will be, as usual, there will be a Factorio stream on Monday. Uh, it's after Christmas now, so we can get those um, up and running again once again. And the videos will go back to more, more or less as normal with um, Factorio videos at the weekend, updates, uh, updates at the weekend rather, and then other videos coming out on Tuesdays because I've got a little bit more time available in my life now. So there should be a, should, there should be a chance of producing a few more. Um, in the meantime, if you think there's anything I've missed out in Dyson Sphere program, then let me know again. Let me know in the comments because I could always dip back in and have a quick look around. If there's if there's little things like going off and investigating a neutron star, that I can do as either as part of a video or or or, or on a stream if it's something rather larger. Um, but yes, as I say, it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed playing it. It's um, it's, it's it's a very very pretty game. It's got a lot more graphical interest than Factorio has. Um, but I stand by my early my original comment that it, it seems to be slightly lighter on the on what you on the scale of things you build up because it kind of has to be with the uh, with all the extra 3D ness and, and and so on. So, but that's not a criticism. It's it's been it's been good fun. I've definitely enjoyed it and uh, wouldn't wouldn't hesitate to recommend it to other people who are looking for something. There's a, a little bit of a change from Factorio. As ever, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, please check out the sponsor, that's tree4.be. Uh, use the code Lawrence Place to get 20% off your Factorio or Minecraft or whatever else servers. Uh, come back, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you see all of the, uh, all the videos and the streams and things as they, as they as they pop up because those are definitely going to be con continuing. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and goodbye.